story of someone who still lacks opportunity. Our data shows that at the end of 2015, two-thirds of our metro areas had more jobs than they did prior to the Great Recession. But what that really means is one-third still have not. This means that a large number of metro economies still haven't recovered from the lost jobs of the recession. This is why we must still make jobs and investment a key part of a national agenda in the coming year. And this is why uh, that those who wish to lead our nation must understand the importance of cities and their metropolitan areas. We need our next president as well as the next Congress to be our partners, to work in concert with us th so that we can pave our streets All right. So we need our next president as well as the Congress to be our partners, to work in concert with us so we can pave our streets, build more affordable housing, reform our police departments, and create good paying jobs for those who need them. We are a nonpartisan group, and the one thing we know more than anything else and more than any other group is in the, in the political sphere right now is how we must work together. Our collective message, if you really care about the financial health of this country and the well-being of the people, should be to care about the cities. You definitely need to work with mayors. I want to thank you very much. And next, we will have our vice president of, the organi of our organization, Mayor Mick Cornett. I did want to speak to the media today about some reforms we're looking for in the criminal justice system. There are bills in front of the House and the Senate that deal with criminal justice, and we largely as mayors urge the passage of these bills. Our criminal justice system in America is broken. It is not unusual in a local jail in the United States for 80 percent of the people inside the jail to be still determined innocent of their crime, not have been convicted. Seventy percent of the people inside the jail are in there for misdemeanor situations. States are largely weaning out of the correction system. They are reducing their budgets. They are spending too much time um, or, or not enough time working on, on the recidivism issues. Do we need to stop no. the press conference until? No. Okay. Just All right. Uh, there are a, a lot of issues involving reentry programs in America that are not being addressed. At the local level, these issues are falling upon the shoulders of, of our law enforcement people and our judicial system and, and mayors that are, that are in this room. Um, we need reform in criminal justice, and it starts at the top, and we would urge Congress to strongly consider the two bills that they have before them. Thank you very much. We'll now hear from our second Vice President of New Orleans, Mitch Landrieu. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming. I want to thank all of the mayors for joining with us today, of course, uh, to our president, to Mayor Mick Cornett, to Tom Cochran, who's our executive director, and to all the mayors who have joined with us today. In 2015, all of the mayors uh, from across America, Republican and Democrat, from large and small cities, came together. We talked about national security. We talked about public safety. We talked about criminal justice reform. We talked about climate change, inequality, and jobs. And the reason that we do that is because cities are where people live. It's where government really hits the streets. It's where we find a way to make sure that things work all over the United States of America. And in particular, the mayors have come together during this presidential race uh, to put together the Mayor's Compact for a Better America and ask the presidential candidates, members of Congress, and of course, mayors and governors from across America to think about making ways, uh, finding ways to make cities better, whether it's protecting our streets, our neighborhoods, our national borders, to investing 
uh, in our transportation system, which everybody knows is substandard, fixing the immigration system and, of course, the criminal justice system that we are all uh, working on as we get through the issues that we're talking about. So the mayors are going to join together across America. We're going to talk about ways to fix the problems that make the lives of our citizens better. We're going to continue to work together and ask the presidential candidates to address the issues that flex, that, that are um, problems for the cities in the United States of America so that we can make sure that we solve the problems where it matters the most. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now we'll hear from the mayor of Atlanta, Mayor Kasim Reed. Well, first I want to thank uh, Mayor Rawlings Blake for her leadership of our organization. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Tom Cochran for his leadership. Uh, we thought it appropriate uh, today because um, last month uh, the Congress, in a bipartisan fashion, passed the FAST Act. And all of the mayors who were in front of you literally worked tirelessly uh, to try to get an appropriate transportation bill passed. And we view this as real progress. So uh, Congress has funded a $300 billion five-year bill. Uh, it's not what we all wanted, but we think it's the opportunity uh, for a breakthrough um, for real job creation in the United States. What we all know and agree on is that if we get back to the basics, dealing with our transportation infrastructure system in a bipartisan manner, the way that it used to be done, there are between 10 to 12 million very good jobs for people all across the United States of America. And now that Congress uh, has passed the FAST Act, um, we need them to take the next step as we enter the presidential um, election phase. And that really is to get more power to mayors locally, because we have the ability to fund projects that are to where people actually live. Uh, I say all of the time that cities are where hope meets the street, and mayors are at the center of action for that. So we wanted to acknowledge the hard work that was done by Congress on FAST Act, but to ask them to take the next step and to push more local funding directly to mayors so that we can continue to push down unemployment and continue to keep the GDP of the United States of America growing and growing. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from the mayor of Flint, Michigan, Mayor Weaver. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk with you all. Uh, you've seen what's been going on in the city of Flint, Michigan. I'm glad that we're getting the attention that we finally deserve to have, but if you've been keeping up with what's going on, this is something that in April will have gone on for two years now, that we haven't had clean, affordable water in the city of Flint. Our kids have been damaged by this lead poisoning that's been going on, and what we've been doing is asking the governor, the state, to be accountable. Uh, I know that you've seen there have been some resignations going on at the top level of Michigan Department, and um, these are some good first steps. Last night was the state of the state. Those are some good first steps, but Flint needs more help. And so that's one of the reasons I was glad to be here, because it gave me the opportunity to talk with the president as well about what's going on in the city of Flint. Uh, our congressional delegation was together today. Uh, resources are being sent to Flint as we speak. Um, there are resources that we need, but it is still not enough. So one of the things we know has to happen is to hold the state accountable. There's money there, and Flint needs to be made a priority about how these funds are distributed. Um, this is something that nobody should have to deal with. Everybody should have clean water. And it's just a travesty when you, you know, it's ironic when you live in the Great Lakes State and we don't have access to clean water. So this is something that it continues to be a disaster for us because we don't know at which point we will be able to drink the water yet. And so I hope other cities from around the country take note about what has happened in Flint. Uh, st start monitoring what's going on with your water, the infrastructure, and um, don't let this happen where you live. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I, I have felt such support 
from the people that I've met with, from the mayors that I've met with all around the country. They have been reaching out, looking at how they can support what's going on in Flint and help us get the resources that we need. Um, but we know that we've talked about uh, would this happen in a different community? And w well, what we believe is that we know, we know Flint is predominantly African American, but it's also a social, it's a class issue as well. And we've got high unemployment. And so we just need people to step up, speak up and speak out about what's going on in Flint. But I'm really glad to be here because I know we're going to get more, more resources. I'm going to get to talk with the people that I need to talk with. And we're going to do everything possible to continue to move Flint forward and get us clean, quality water. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Mayor Weaver, where's the money going to come from? Oops. Mayor Weaver, can you spend some time with us? I thought this was a press conference. <laughs> yeah. OK, sure. Mayor Weaver, WJRT in Flint, Michigan. Where's the money going to come from? $150 million to replace the pipe. Your estimate. For those who have Q&A for Mayor Weaver, I invite you to come up. Can you just kind of come right over here, please? So all of you guys? Yeah, all of you guys? I'm just not trying to make any assumptions. I cannot, I cannot hear, I cannot hear you. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Okay, we're going to do 10 minute Q&A with Mayor Weaver. If I could have everybody be quiet, please, so we could actually hear the questions. We could actually just hear the questions. I, I cannot hear everybody. You want it? Come on, guys, Okay, thank you everybody. Okay, Mayor Weaver. Could you follow up on your comment that no, you made you earlier? Where you from? Sure. Emily Badger with the Washington Post. You commented earlier that this raises questions about whether or not this would happen in another community. And Hillary Clinton commented during the debate on Saturday that she didn't believe that the response would have been as slow in a suburb, a wealthy suburb of Detroit. Did you think that that was a fair uh, assessment of what's going on? And, and to what extent do you believe that resources haven't been flowing to this community precisely because it's high poverty, it's majority minority? Well, you know, and one of the things I want to preface this by is this did happen under emergency manager as well. And yes, that is something that we believe. You know, it's a, it's a minority community. It's a poor community, and our voices were not heard. And that's part of this problem. Like I said, this has been going on for almost two years. And the citizens, the community, spoke out about this shortly after the switch was made to the, to the Flint River water, and nothing was done. And they marched. And, and pastors got together, and it wasn't until uh, Mark Edwards and Virginia Tech came in that people even started listening to what we were saying, and then our medical community spoke out. That was a year. That took a year for us to be heard. So I, I was glad that she brought this added attention to this and made that comment, and that is why also the, the state and the national NAACP got together and put out a statement as well because this is a civil right. Water is a basic human right and everybody deserves clean water. Mayor, the, uh, Mayor, the, the governor of Michigan yesterday just gave you the state address. I'm sorry. The top school at the public radio. The governor yesterday in his state of the state address said that there were failures at all levels, at his level, below him, federal, 
kind of spreading the responsibility up and down. Do you agree with that assessment from where, from where you are? Well, the, the state is ultimately responsible, but yes, we do agree with that. And that's why, you know, when people have asked, well, who do you blame? We know the buck stops with the governor. We know that, but there is fault to go, you know, if we want to start pointing fingers, there's enough blame to go all the way around. That is absolutely right. One of the things I've, I have decided to do with my energy and with my time is let the investigation show us who knew what when, because I've got to focus my energy on making sure the people of the city of Flint get the resources that they need. So I've tried to stay focused on that piece of it. Nothing happened. Why did it take so long until something happened? Well, that's the very question we ask, because like I said, we have been crying about this for almost two, it will be two years in April, and that's what we want to know. What took so long? Because it didn't take a scientist to tell us that brown water is not good. And, and this is what we have been talking about for the longest. So that, the question you asked is the same question we've had. What asks did you have of President Obama in your meeting with him? Well, one of the ask is, I mean, we've always known we needed some federal assistance. This is bigger than the city of Flint can't handle this financially. The state doesn't have the resources to handle it financially, and so we know we need some federal assistance. But the other thing we've asked him to do when he is going to be meeting with the governor, because the state still has to step up and give us some more. Uh, yesterday, when Governor Snyder had his state of the state, what he talked about was a very good start. We want that, but we know we didn't deserve what happened to us, and we deserve more support. We deserve more resources and finances as a result of what happened. So that's what we talked about. Is that enough? Uh, it's a start. It's a start because uh, that's been one of the issues with the city of Flint has been broken trust and, and, and who do we believe? And, and so the governor uh, doing that is a good first step because he's going to have to regain trust and confidence. So that's something that is a good start for him. Is it enough? No. This, you know, trust was broken over a period of time and you don't regain trust within a matter of seconds was made. So this is something that he's going to have to work on for a long, long time. And it's something that even the city of Flint has to continue to work on as well. You want the 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 economic impact? Thank you, everybody. Obviously, if you have individual requests, you, you feel free to talk to her. Other mayors are also in the next room. If you guys want to talk to other mayors about other issues, they are open and welcome to talk to you about individual issues. Thank you. Are you with a particular organization? Yes. And why did you want to be here to protest against Rahm Emanuel? I think Rahm Emanuel signifies uh, the ills of, of mayors all over the country and elected officials and the failure of government to take seriously um, the needs of um, the black communities in their cities to the point that there's, uh, there's no longer a time to talk and sit down um, that we're just willing to do whatever we need to to keep the have you been following the controversy with Laquan McDonald? Yes, absolutely. I think everybody has. And how did that affect you? Um, as a mother, as a black person, it was devastating. So, um, regardless of what the name is, here in D.C., we have uh, Alonzo Smith and Raphael Briscoe, who were murdered by police as well. Um, and so, for all of these people, so they don't die in vain, but also so that um, while you may remember the names of them, hopefully you won't remember, you won't forget the names of the officers that murdered them and the governments and mayors, police departments who covered it up. Did this issue change your view of Rahm Emanuel? Um, no, I already thought that he was pretty crooked, but this just makes it even more. Thank you. Thanks Can I get your name? April. April.